On August 31st, a NASA team of experts arrived in Santiago for about a week as part of NASA's commitment to provide U.S. assistance. NASA's assistance was only a small contribution to the Chilean government's overall rescue effort. The NASA team included two medical doctors, a psychologist, and an engineer. Dr. Michael Duncan, Deputy Chief Medical Officer and NASA's Space Life Sciences Directorate at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, led the team. The other team members are physician J.D. Polk, psychologist Al Holland, and engineer Clint Cragg. The Chileans um, had a plan for refeeding. Um, we reviewed that plan with them and uh, basically, you know, agreed with the kinds of things that they were doing. As we got to talking about things like vitamin D supplements, uh, for example, we talked to them about how we do that uh, in our astronauts in space. And, uh, you know, those were the kinds of, of, uh, of, of recommendations that that we, or suggestions that we made to them. For the ascent portion of this ride in the rescue cage to the surface, we uh, received varying uh, reports on how long that ride was going to take. It is so cramped in there that you can't move around much, you can't flex your muscles, so you're in, in essence um, standing at attention. And any any military recruit that has, standed, that has stood at attention for any length of time knows uh, that the risk of fainting is, is real. Um, so, you know, the, the idea of doing a fluid load, much like we do with our astronauts, of giving, them, giving the miners a, 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 a liquids that had carbohydrates in it, had electrolytes uh, and salt in it, uh, all designed to increase their central blood volume. Uh, we also suggested um, things like uh, compression stockings to the lower extremities and lower abdomen. Again, to drive the blood centrally, keep the blood pressure up, and prevent uh, the, uh, the miner from fainting on the way up. As you get past the rescue phase of, of extracting them directly out of the mine, uh, one of our uh, physicians is a, a specialist in emergency uh, uh, medical evacuation and he talked to them a lot about you know some things to consider um, having a triage site uh, which the Chileans had already you know planned for but you know talking more about how we would evacuate them from the site and get them to the hospital uh, and kind of you know help talk through some plans there and I think that uh, our Chilean colleagues listened to that and, and implemented a lot of things that, uh, that you know, he uh, brought to their attention. The other thing that was very important you know, from a, uh, the standpoint of the care of the miners uh, was from the psychological support standpoint. And of course, with our long duration crews, uh, we have a, a team of experts uh, that to provide uh, behavioral health uh, and support, not only of the astronaut, but of their families. And this, uh, I think, was uh, an important contribution that, uh, that we talked uh, through uh, with their psychologists that were topside uh, at the mine site. In addition, the whole idea of supporting the miner and the family once the rescue is, is completed, the, the, the Chileans were, were really concentrating on the rescue and, and hadn't gotten their thinking uh, you know, completely outlined on how they were going to handle the miners uh, once they, they, they got them out. And I think we were able to you know, provide some insights and, uh, and hopefully there were some things that they drew from that that, that were uh, imp important and that they've implemented. Such things as the celebrity status of the, of the miner. These guys were not prepared for that, and there's going to be a lot of pressures on them from uh, society, not only locally, but in their country and really around the world. NASA's part in this uh, was uh, you know, just one small part in a very uh, overwhelming effort by the, uh, the Chilean government. Uh, it's all about the miners, it's all about the Chileans' uh, response and their uh, spirit and tenacity to go after that. You know, we were just pleased to be a part of it. 
we had a preconceived notion of what things might apply from spaceflight to the Chilean mine. And, and what was surprising to us and probably to our Chilean counterparts, once we got down there and actually understood what it was the miners were going through and looked at the difficulties uh, that the Chilean health authorities and the engineers were going to uh, attempt to tackle was how many things we could actually translate from spaceflight that were uh, over and above, well, well over and above, what we even anticipated. Uh, whether it was the refeeding plan, uh, whether it was the fluid loading protocol that we used from the shuttle and Soyuz return, uh, down to the requirements for how to write specific requirements for the escape module and what things to use in the escape module and uh, how to guard against certain dangers or hazards in the escape module. So it, it really ranged from engineering to medical to psychological, uh, even uh, our processes at NASA, uh, how we uh, build uh, leadership structures or how we develop uh, documents uh, to uh, instruct folks how to build certain uh, elements, things that we're used to on a day-to-day -day basis uh, that we take for granted were actually translated uh, very well. The urine test strip. Uh, which can test for something we call specific gravity, which can tell you how well hydrated you are. Uh, ketones, which can tell you uh, whether or not you've got adequate nutrition or in a starvation state. Uh, and even check for blood or myoglobin, which is a protein uh, from muscle breakdown that can bombard the kidney. Uh, that was very uh, fruitful, uh, if you will, or fruitful advice for the Chileans. Uh, because they took that advice, they used that with the miners, and they found out that about 50% of those miners had positive myoglobin uh, for that protein breaking down, uh, which could cause kidney failure if left unattended. Being confined in a high-stress environment in an enclosed space uh, like the mine uh, can cause reactivation of viruses, Epstein-Barr virus, herpes virus. We see that in spaceflight with the reactivation of those viruses. And that can last for months even after you're out um, on the surface or after the ordeal. We see that months after astronauts return from spaceflight, the same thing will happen with the miners. It was astounding to see it in, this, in that type of uh, in-your-face direct applicability of, of spaceflight technology and development and protocols that we've had and engineering uh, expertise uh, used directly on the ground. Uh, and there's no better uh, payoff than to save 33 people. When we arrived down there at the end of August, 1st of September, um, there was a, a mindset which was rather short-term. Um, they were a mining community thinking about rescue and all the, the mine disasters that had occurred in the past. The rescues occurred very quickly. One of the things we tried to do was to shift that mindset in the miners, in the families, in the topside personnel, and in the message that went out from these people um, toward the long-term run so that their expectations um, about when they might be coming out were more realistic and therefore their coping would be more realistic, therefore their health would be better. We provided information um, and guidance uh, regarding individual self-control and how, what individual coping mechanisms could be encouraged uh, by topside on the part of the miners. Um, advice to give the miners, some training to give the miners about how to manage themselves and their emotions and their expectations over a long period of time in a small space, about how to manage their relationships with the other miners, and for the uh, leaders um, and some of the key personnel is how to manage team dynamics in confinement over a long period of time. We were concerned about desynchrony uh, among the miners of their sleep-wake cycles, that they would start to perhaps free run, uh, which is a situation in which your sleep-wake uh, cycles begin to drift off the usual 24-hour um, uh, pattern. So we wanted to entrain the individual's sleep-wake cycles in their internal clock, so to speak, um, with a regular light-dark pattern, uh, which was similar to the one top side, so that they would be able to communicate more effectively with the topside people as well and be on the same schedule. It also made regular the social life down under so that everyone was on the same wake up, go to sleep time. Uh, people were able to eat together. 
Um, there was communication with the doctor at a certain time of day, and so you had this regularity, which not only stabilizes an individual, but stabilizes their small community that they had down there. One of my recommendations was that NASA could help um, perhaps flushing out some of these requirements for the rescue capsule. Um, upon returning to the United States, I got an email from the Minister of Health asking for that, asking for us to, to provide them some requirements for the capsule. And so I put together a team of, of engineers from uh, around, around the agency, from almost every center. And over the course of three days, we, uh, we hammered out uh, about a 12 or 13 page uh, requirements list for the capsule and sent that down. After we had sent these requirements down, um, I got a, uh, uh, some communication with uh, another uh, Navy, Chilean Navy commander that I had met down there, and he was intimately involved in the design process of this capsule um, with the Chilean Navy engineers, and, and he told me that, that they had incorporated most of the suggestions that we had uh, provided to them. When I saw the first um, miner being extracted last night, I was, uh, you know, both happy and very relieved. And it, and it appears that the, uh, the final design of the capsule is working just, you know, just great. So I'm very happy about that. A couple things that I'll remember most about this whole experience is one, one is the uh, the open openness and graciousness of the Chilean people. I, I thought they were very, very nice, uh, very. Uh, supportive of our visit, very supportive of the things that we recommended they ought to do. Um, the other thing I'll, I'm taking away from this is that uh, our agency is really, really has a lot of exceptional people, and th that that uh, 20 or so engineers that uh, offered to drop everything and work with me for three days to put this requirements list together, I think, really exemplifies the the things that NASA uh, stands for.